Hi, welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on their journey to publication. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction. All righty. Thanks for tuning in, all of you who are watching and listening live. A big thank you to all of our listeners on iTunes or any of the other platforms where you can catch us pre-recorded. If you like what we do, remember to like and subscribe so that you never miss a single episode. Um, how's the chat looking today? I haven't even been over there. We got some people uh, chiming in yet? Not yet. All every right. time you ask, it's so funny. Every time that we like don't pay attention, like it's uh, crazy. And every single time you host <laughs> and you ask, there's <laughs> no one showing up yet. Because the problem is, I know I tend to ignore the chat, so then I'm hyper focused on it. So it's terrible. Oh, hi, Robin. Hi, hi Shell. Hi, Sage. Oh, yay. All three of you just popped up instantly there. Good morning <laughs> to you and to all you other uh, Christian indie writer fans. We appreciate you. We like to start each episode with a segment called What's Up? We go around the virtual table and check in with our host to find out what is going on in our personal lives. So, what is up with you, Rhonda? Oh, I mean. Um, I am organizing and reorganizing and um, just trying to make things less complicated for me. So, um, yeah, I've got a lot. can Can we just address the elephant in the room? You did not dye your hair. I did not dye my hair. I don't know why it looks purple, but I'm having flashbacks from my childhood, Barbie. Hopefully you are as well. What happened? What is that story? Uh, when I was in eighth grade, my mom was in her first year of cosmetology school. And that is when, okay, so I'm 47. So this eighth grade was in the middle of the 80s. And that's when temporary hair dye first came out. Mm. And she said, I need to experiment. Who can I trap in my chair? <laughs> and <clears throat> so um, I just happened to walk, walk along at the right time and she poured this purple stuff on my hair. I was going to a Christian school at the time. They thought I was trying to be punk. I got a talking to from the uh, girls matron. And um, yeah, so, and oh, it just no. didn't instantly wash out either. Was it like a bluing agent? Was it like a bluing situation? Is that what nope, it was? It no, it was, um, I think it was called mahogany. I want to mm. say maybe Barbie can help us with that. Yeah, that's great. Oh, thanks for sharing that story. That's fun. What's up with you this week, Jen? Um, lots and lots of construction, as you can see. I don't know if you Ooh, remember. Yeah. Those brown walls are now uh, a lovely gray. It's I chose the same color that is the grout, like the cement grout between the fireplace bricks, and I love it. So that's good idea. Call it gray. Grayish, that's what, yeah. Oh, that's like oh. a, it's like a, a Ben Affleck, J, what did they call Ben Affleck? Yeah. <laughs> ben Affleck, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm loving it. We're getting flooring put down in some places and just getting a lot of like stuff done. So it's like Ben, that's, that's my what's up. Literally all I do is paint, pull up carpet, put down floors, get in this place, you know, so. It's so funny how, you know, especially in the areas we grew up, most people would do their own painting. And my husband was a house painter when we got married. People would be like, people pay other people to come and paint their house. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, but the whole idea of a grage, can you imagine those old painters from like 1930s and 40s, like in these new colors that they have, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> passionate sunset or whatever. They'd be like, it's yellow. You know what I mean? Right. It's, but there's so many different ones you can get now. Right. Speaking of that, I have to say that I give a shout out. I told you guys already, but I have to give a shout out to my husband. So I picked a color online because of what's going on, you know, in our world. And we just like drove up and picked it up and um, got it here. We put it on the walls and I hated it. (gasps) Hated it. It was not the right color. Um, It did not look like what did on the screen at all. And my husband is like, go get a different one. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of men, a lot of women too would have been like, oh, it's good enough. 
but it was the shade wrong. It was just the shade wrong. And it was going to ruin everything else that I had because of long story. Anyway, um, I just appreciate my husband for just caring enough about me and like, just it's something little, but it, but there's so much going on in my life that it's just like that one thing. It felt like it was just the weight, right? Like it was I just like, Oh, all understand. Yes. So oh, was no. it a bit too grazy or a bit too beigey? <laughs> one it was too gray. <laughs> it looked like the side of a metal building. Like it oh, didn't no. look, it wasn't warm at all. It looked cold and I just yeah, it wasn't a gray at all. It was definitely a gray. So All right, you're going to hit the chat before speaking I of, am. Um, yeah. Speaking of yellow walls with fancy names, that's pineapple upside down cake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's that a gorgeous color though. Oh, yes, all it right. is. All right, we have some what's up going on in our chat. Robin says that it's all the oh. baking. Made a toffee, a toffee cake. Coffee. I have a feeling, is that a typo or is that what it's really called? I think she talked about that before in another Maybe. episode. It's like coffee and toffee. It's like a beautiful mm. looking situation. Mm. And he made the best white bread. That sounds so, I'm oh. so hungry. My what's up is the president announced last night that our national lockdown will now be 35 days until 21. Uh, our yeah. governor, the governor of Michigan came on and said the rest of April we are as well. Shell Vest says, my what's up is I've been exhausted, hot mess all week, but I wrote every day and Yay! made it. Yay! Right. Hey, Shell. Day. Good job. All this baking and carb loading. It must be a rider thing. <laughs> Whoops. Then our mama Gretchen is saying paint is not a necessary purchase along with flowers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, when you have to move and you and you have a limited time, that's oh. it. Well, you it's, know what? That's new anyway. I think Barb is saying that that's new now that you're not going to be able to get out there and get the paint. So good thing yeah. you got it done when you did, right? Um, my what's up? Not a huge amount on the lockdown. Been enjoying going on nice dog walks in the weather. Disney came to the UK in the last week or so. I believe we watch it. Must be oh Disney Plus mm -hmm. came last week. So Mandalorian is great. It is really great. So just in time for when you have all kinds of time on your hands to get caught up too. So that's perfect. What's up with you, Tina? Well, now I have not left the house in four weeks. <laughs> Last <laughs> week was three weeks. Wow, that's so and unusual. Tell I, us more. Uh, I have officially designed my first entire website where I wrote all the code. Yay! Wow. And the Very little cool. icons that that look that have the F and the I on it for Facebook and Instagram <laughs> are actually in front of the words Facebook and Instagram. And it only took me 10 hours of actual time trying to figure out uh -huh. how to do it. <laughs> so like I said, I thought I was smart until I took this course. Well, I think that before mm -hmm. your business, making websites will be more profitable for you. You may have to work on that, that curve of time that it takes to design <laughs> just one. <laughs> well, I really didn't do it so that I could make money, but I, I know, was thinking yeah. it would help me out because I, I do the websites for our church and my author thing. So Maria is asking if you have a nice garden or yard to sit out in, Tina. No, I sure don't. Hmm. Would you go outside if you had it though? Because I have it and I underutilize it. I'm just asking because I know I don't I, utilize my outside. I really I probably have. would if I had a nice private backyard. Yeah. That I could sit in, but we are on a like a corner and we don't have a backyard. It's all in the front and there's a party store down the street. So it's not private at all. <laughs> and I like I don't want to sit in my front yard and talk to my neighbors. <laughs> I want like a back porch where they can't see me. <laughs> Rhonda has a nice yard though. Or likes to be out in it. I mm -hmm. have a one that needs a lot of weeding done. So Rhonda, if you're feeling like coming over, oh, we can't now. Never mind. I keep I forgetting. Know, I know. I'm saving How all my weeding garden. essential. Weeding should be essential. Mm hmm I have, um, I'll tell you my what's up and then we'll jump into the topic for this week. Um, basically more of the same. I'm so blessed that my husband is home and not parked. He was in, I don't know, far away Vegas. He was in Las Vegas when stuff started to be a little dicey and they sent him home and said, stay home if you can. So he has been. And so I am a happy girl um, for that reason. So that just continues. All righty, ready. Who's ready to get into our topic for today? which is proceed with caution, protecting your rough draft. I mean, it sounds really dramatic, but frankly, we have some very strong feelings about this particular topic. 
because it just really kind of stinks to see someone being vulnerable and paying the price, you know, with some un unfortunate consequences. So why you should not share your rough draft, draft just anywhere? Who would like to start us off? I will say something. All right. Okay. So for my nano project, I um, was hoping to get that finished during this nano here in April, but I'm talking about the one I started in November. Um, so basically I got my super rough draft done. It was about 12, 13,000 words or something. And then I started going on to my first draft of it. And um, before I got too far into that, I wanted someone to read it, but I needed to make sure I had somebody who understood my writing style, who understood what I would be looking for, um, would understand when they were reading incomplete sentences and bad grammar and misspellings and everything, what I was going for, but could still give me some good feedback on where it was going. So I had to be really choosy about who I read it. And personally, I think I picked the perfect person to do that <laughs> because the feedback was exactly what I was looking for. Um, she didn't give me feedback on things that like the grammar and the stuff that I wasn't, I knew was going to be bad. So anyway, I think it's very important. It was important for me to protect it from the people who didn't understand yet, but it was also important for me to find somebody that could read it at that stage. Right. Because, well, first of all, I think it's important to know what you're expecting from the, the person to review it, because like you were able to clearly communicate that just now to us. So I'm sure those clear instructions really help the person give you the kind of feedback that you wanted actually, right? So yeah, that's a very good piece of advice. So like know why you're actually sharing it. If you're really just sharing it to hear great job, then do a sprint for Christian Indie Writers and share it with us because we will give you only positive feedback. Most people that you ask to look at your draft think you want help and the help that they're going to give you may not be the help you want if you don't know how to ask for it. So that's a really good tip, Rhonda. What about you? Yeah. What do you have to say? I've seen so many people on this. Is, we, we've talked about this before, but on Twitter, especially or in Facebook groups that will um, say they'll throw something out there. Like I see people tweet paragraphs or like they'll do a screenshot and tweet it something that they just wrote because they're so proud of it and it's exciting. And maybe there's, they accomplished something that they were hoping for, but it's just not ready. And I'm telling you, social media is not a place of encouragement. There are trolls and there are people like Jamie said that they think that they're helping, but they're not because they give you criticism right away. And here you put all like your guts out there, you know, this is your art. And then th there are people that are just going to stomp on it because it just isn't ready for that. Now um, I'm, I know there has to be stages, but like if you've just written something, don't throw it out there for the world to see. That's our, I think our biggest message in this. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't put it on Twitter. Not like when you first written it, because you may get a couple people that are like, yay for you, but most people are not going to, or they're not going to comment at all because they don't really know why you're doing that. They're not, they don't know if they should be critical or they shouldn't be critical. So people might read it, but they're not going to comment. And that's how sometimes even more damaging to your spirit when nobody has the same excitement and yay that you did when you finished writing this, right? Yes. And that's, that's can be very damaging and it can discourage you from continuing with the project if you don't get that feedback you're looking for. And we might as well just stop right here and say most writing groups on Facebook or Twitter or wherever are not appropriate audiences for your work. Would you agree, Tina, that that's the case? Yeah. And why is that? Why would you not want to share in a group of writers? Well, th in my experience, they will a lot of some, a lot of them will try to tell you how to rewrite it, and then <laughs> it's in their voice. Yeah. When they try to tell you how to rewrite it, or it's how they would do it. And I don't want to write how they write. I want to write mm -hmm. how I write. And I just wanted somebody to say, um, yes, this is good enough or no, it's not. Right. You know? mm -hmm. So, um, and, and most of those writers are also in the writing group for the same reason you are to get attention. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's, that's not the ideal place to be to. right because they're writing their own stuff wishing someone would look at their writing right right exactly so they're not there to see your beautiful piece that you just crafted um and it may very well be good but they're not an audience for you right right 
And I wish everybody's intentions were pure, but we know they're not because there are a lot of people that are just mean and there are a lot of people that are competitive. I think there, there are so many people, especially when you're first starting out that, that if you're doing well, they, they don't, they don't want you to do well because then it like shines a light on the fact that they've not finished their book or they're not writing like they want to. And the four of us have been in an actual physical writing group, not the one we always uh, talk about, the one we love, but we were in a a nano group um, and it was so negative. So, so negative. And it was so like tearing people apart, like taking a writing and trying to find the problem, like trying to find something that you can criticize not going and looking for what's positive. Like, I don't care if I had printed something out from a, a famous writer that had already been edited and already published and just tried to present it as my own. They would find something like one of the things I brought one time. And you guys are gonna remember this. This one person was like, well, I don't even know what happened to the third sister. I'm so <clears throat> mad that like I read this and like she never told me what happened to the third sister. There was no third sister. There was no third no. sister. I locked eyes with Jennifer and we're just both like, I'm like, did I forget the third sister? And she's telepathically telling me, no, there was no third Cause, sister. Because I wasn't allowed to talk. They could right. say, in this writing group, you could, they could say anything they wanted about our, the person's writing, and the person was not allowed to address it. You just had to sit there and take it. And it was just like, like nowhere was there. And so he spent, I want to say, a good five minutes ranting about me not talking about the third sister. And then <laughs> when we cleared it up, he still was mad. I think there, there, you mentioned something. There had to be a third, or there should have been a third sister. <laughs> so yeah anyways I so love the this. point yes the point is to be careful about where you share and we talked about where you maybe would be careful to not make your rough draft available okay but at what point is it okay to start really sharing your work i mean okay so are we talking about sharing it with just one person jennifer because i mean so on this outline says when is it okay to share are we talking about sharing it with one person publishing it what are we talking about we talked about before you share it with anyone, it has to go through at least one edit, at least, at least one. one. Right. <laughs> and for me, editing is, is a, a pretty, I do a pretty long process for editing. And so you have to walk away from it. You can't just edit it. Right, like you write a chapter and then you look it over and then you send it to somebody like that. Unless you've been writing a long time and you have a relationship with this person that you're sending it to. Of course, there's always going to be, opportunities that are different than what we're talking about but in general once just looking at it once that does not make your book or your story presentable yet but i will say that you got to have cheerleaders too are we at that point in the in the i'm trying to pull up the outline at the same time because i don't want to get ahead of us oh it's okay well we are talking about what are when is it okay to share and where are safe spaces i suppose it can be an overlapping just general conversation i don't think we need to go in order so okay. I, I like to hear what you have to say about how edited should it be? And then who would you pick? Like, so right. let's talk on that. So, yeah. So um, I think that it needs to have at least one decent edit from you, which means you walk away from it for a while and then you come back and edit it. Then if you want to share it, it has to be with a cheerleader at this point. A cheerleader is someone that um, no matter what you do, they're going to be like, this is so great. And the reason why I say it needs to be cheerleader, because we all need that. We all need someone that loves us and will look at this and just give us that encouragement. Because I think everyone sitting around this table here, including our chat, have been at a point in your writing where you feel like, oh, I'm terrible. This is horrible. No one's ever going to read this. I, it's it's garbage. And you need that person that's not you to look at and say, it's not garbage. Keep going. Because it possibly is garbage at that point. Like it's not, it's not publishable yet, but it doesn't mean to give up. Right. So you need right. that person. It's never going to see it as garbage. So they keep telling you to keep going. Yes. And what's interesting is we normally um, disregard those super fans in our lives. And we say, well, it doesn't even count because they like everything I write. Well, you know what? Those are the people who you need to have around you because you're going to be very tender after you just create a piece of art that you're emotionally invested in, you need someone to tell you what's good about it before you hear what's bad about it. And I don't, and, and people need to stop just saying, well, that's just mom or that's just my husband. They always say they like it because guess what? That's really a gift that you have. If you have someone in your life who loves everything that you've ever written, stop taking them for granted and uh, utilize them because you really do need some add a girls or add a boy to keep going. I think my mom would be brutally honest. <laughs> mm. 
Come well, on, there are you. exceptions to every rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robin, speaking of an exception, Robin says, unless you're Sage and I, who send each other the ugliest of babies of writing, we see it for what it is and give probably feedback. Amazing. That, but that's yes. a great point because yes. the four of us, we are, have such a relationship and have worked together so long. I could send an ugly baby to any of you and you know what I can write and you'll be able to look at it and you'll know what stage I'm at and we'll, we will communicate to each other what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for an edit. I'm not looking for you to look for missing commas. Like you'll know, right? And I think we need to probably be clear too for everybody to understand that what we're talking about right now are first drafts. The first rough, draft. the rough first draft because this is what we see over and over and over again in social media, people sending their rough, their first draft out there and hoping for it to get accolades. And this, this is not the time you're only going to get hurt in that. Well, so. let's just pause for a moment. And let's say this is not some people's first drafts. Sometimes they think they've done an edit. Um, so, so maybe, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Well, aren't mm -hmm. we just always assuming these are rough drafts? So I suppose what we're saying is that these are at least not edited at least not like they didn't check to make sure their verb tense matched or, or things like that. Right. Right. Um, because a rough draft is going to be rough. Yeah. Now Maria says, I agree, Robin, my friend is in an early, very early stage of discovering writing and she wanted feedback to see what her writing was like. I think it's okay to send first drafts to one or two friends for that reason, because you're her cheerleader, Maria. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what I'm saying that you need those cheerleaders early on because you don't know. Like you cannot really trust yourself to either be, you might be too positive about your writing or you might not be positive enough. So yes, absolutely agree, but do not put it out for the world to see. Right. We're trying right. to talk about safe places to share your first draft. And I just really love that you guys have managed to find that community among one another. And mm -hmm. they're all, everybody in our chat seems to be like-minded that way. So if you guys want to connect, if you guys are in the same time zone where you can do a virtual writing group or something like that, we encourage you to connect with one another so you can find a safe person to give you the feedback you want and not the stuff that you didn't ask for. Exactly. All right. We're trying to keep it safe. Well, what have we not covered um, on our outline here? So uh, what if all of your friends are in the writing group could be the one? So say, how would you pick, right? How would you pick if you had several contenders? For uh, who to show it to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for one, um, you you three ladies, I, I would consider safe friends to share my work with. And you each write in very different genres. So I guess I would use that as a consideration. Like, what am I writing and who would be the best uh, able to look at it and tell me? Um, like, if I was going to write a historical romance, I would send it to Jen. Mm -hmm. If I was doing something about um, history, like... Um, What am I trying to say? Like reality history. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. I probably send it to Rhonda. A more fantasy type elephant and kind of weird quirky stuff, I'd send it to Jamie. I'm not <laughs> saying that you're weird and quirky, but some of your writing. Well, is. Uh, it's fine. That's great. That's a really good piece of advice. And then I think we hearken back to Rhonda's original advice, right? Like know what you need. Yes. Yeah. Because I mean, you're going to need something different from every person, from for every piece. Yes, Jen. And as I say, if you're in a writing group too, I would also try not to wear out one person. Oh, you know, yeah. because especially a newer writing group, like don't always send to the first, or if you have like a lot and you need a lot of feedback, which I think at the beginning, maybe a person does. I think you need more feedback at the beginning. Once you get in your groove, you know what kind of writer you are, you kind of have a handle on that. But at the beginning, you need lots of feedback. I would rotate it around so you're not wearing anybody out. And then the other thing is you have to be willing to give feedback too. You have to be willing right. to read people's stuff too, which can also take time out of out of what you're doing. But again, once you take by the time you take it to writing group, generally speaking, I know we have we've already talked about how there are some exceptions, but generally speaking, that's already gone through an edit, it's already gone to your cheerleader, and you've probably brought it back for another edit. It needs to be looked at because it's disrespectful to your writing group to bring something that is unedited. It is very to be on the other end of that is a very hard thing because then again you 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 might say I don't want you to look for punctuation or I don't want you to look for spelling mistakes or I don't want but the problem is is you can't help but see them 
it slows so, you down when you're it slows you down yeah. and you're going to get so much better feedback from the people in your writing group if you give them as clean a copy as possible because they're not going to be stumbling on all those other things and let me just say the cure for this i've got to show somebody itis okay aside mm -hmm. from first of all remembering that you have an audience of one who's already seen it and is already telling you good job okay so chill out because for some reason we have this desire to hurry up and show another human being what we've done, okay? So put it away and write something else because I think what happens is they become too precious to us, these little things that we churn out and they become, it becomes very important to get good feedback about it because you believe it's a one and done. You believe it's the only time you'll be able to create something so wonderful. So you so badly need the validation that it is wonderful that you stop and don't continue to improve your craft by getting on with writing the next one. So put that first one aside, believe that someday you'll be ready for the Atta Girls and keep writing because believe it or not, you're gonna be embarrassed of that first piece before too long. And you've been showing it around everywhere. Look what a great writer I am, but you're going to improve and you're going to be like, ooh, I thought that was good. I promise you it will happen. It happened to all of us, it happened to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also think that it's really important for us to remember that this is our art. And that as Christians, we, I believe that my stories have come from God, that God has helped me and given me these stories. So it's a gift. So give that gift the honor that it, you know, the, the, the gift from God, the honor that it deserves by giving it a good edit, giving it time and then protecting it, not putting it out there where people can trample on it and uh, that don't deserve to have a first look at it. There they are some really people in your life, they don't deserve it. This is your art. This is your protected art. And this is kind of why we talked about this, is that there are people in your life that will deserve to have a peek into that, like, you know, part of your life. Not everybody does. And you need to remember that so that when you do share it, it's a positive experience for you. Because in a lot of ways, all right, so when I started writing, my husband was working third shift. And so I didn't see him like we, I did see him, but like I had a lot of time at night, like my kids went to bed. And so I'm like, I'm finally going to do this. I'm going to write my book. I thought I only had one in me, just like Jamie said. Um, and I started writing it and I didn't tell him. And then I was like about halfway through and I started talking to my, my, who was my cheerleader. And I, I called her. She knew I sent her, um, chapters and she loved it like she just was eating it up and encouraging me and it just was very exciting for me right and that kept me going yeah. i needed that i needed yeah. someone to say where's the next chapter i can't wait and that kept me going because that doubt starts to to creep in right but i still don't tell my husband now i know that's really weird and it seems weird to me too even when i think about it because my husband he and i are one right but there that was still a part of me that i still was protecting because i still wasn't sure you were right. very vulnerable. Very I was vulnerable. vulnerable. That's the yeah. word. Yes. And so yeah. I think sometimes we're so excited about our art that we forget about how vulnerable we are and we share it. And then when it doesn't get what we, the feedback that we think or the results that we think, it can be very damaging. It's more than somebody mm -hmm. just criticizing a tweet that you did or okay. criticizing what clothing you're wearing or the, the fact that you didn't curl your hair today, whatever. Yeah. It's different. Here's a warning that this is a very PG analogy, but imagine after you've just delivered a baby, the moment after, okay? No time to clean up or cover up or anything. How many people do you want in that room? Right. Don't you wanna take a few minutes to get yourself put together before you present, right? This is the rough draft. How many people belong in that delivery room? Probably not very many. You are birthing something, you are creating something, and that creation deserves protection and only to be shared with the people who are going to love it the way that you do. And that's, I, I don't know, that analogy just came to me. Now, my husband, even though he's not a fan of Christian romance, it wouldn't be something he would go out and buy. In my editing process, one of the final steps I do is I read my, I read it out loud to myself. I had the computer read it to me and then my final one before I send it off to an editor is I read it aloud because it's amazing the things that you find, but I read it aloud to my husband. That's how I share it with him. That's just something we do. Like it takes me about four or five days and I read it aloud like at night, like after dinner or whatever, I read some to him and that, so I don't want anyone to think that I'm like not, like I'm sharing with everyone else, not my husband, but, but again, it's not ready for him the yet. The first time was scary. Oh, yeah. yes. 
It was. And he's what my about, husband. Yeah. What about you ladies? Do you find it difficult to share your first drafts? Do you have, do you have a point when you know it's time to share it? Either of you? I don't yeah. really have a problem sharing my stuff when it's yeah. ready. Yeah. The thing that I have a problem with is when somebody else wants me to read, but they're not being honest with themselves about what kind of feedback they want. Oh, you know, if they want me to read their rough draft and tell them what a great story idea they have or whatever, fine. You know, tell me that you only want good feedback. Yeah, you but, can be a great cheerleader, Rhonda. You're an excellent cheerleader. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I have to work hard at being a cheerleader because I also can have critique. a red pen. You have a red yeah. pen. This. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so hard. You have, to be, you have to be willing. You have to understand that if you're asking for critique, you're getting it. The people who are going to be honest with you are going to give you critique and you cannot get your feelings hurt if that's what you're asking for. Well, you can, yeah. but you can't take it out on them. <laughs> yes. Yes. And also if you're the critiquer, you can't be trying to be extra rough, but no, you have to be right. trying to help. You have to be trying to help make the piece better, right? Not trying to mm. teach the writer a lesson, not trying to make them the writer that you are, but you're trying to help them make the piece what you know they want it to be. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share the first time I shared my stuff. Go for it. And I, before I do this, I just want to say, tell Barb that I love you. <laughs> I, I brought my prologue for my book to the, our first writing group and that's I had really not shown anyone else in my book and I thought it was great I thought my, you know this is like the best that I can do kind of like that's the that's the feeling I showed up at that first thing with and then Barbie t started to point out all of my passive voice <laughs> <laughs> and I was crushed. And he was like, and I remember too, because Barb was saying, blah, 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 pass the voice, blah, 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 pass the voice. And then later it was reported to us that Tina did not know what that was. And yeah. so she was completely confused the whole time. She's like, passive voice. But it was funny because it did send Tina on to learn uh, about passive voice. So it was great that Barb was right. not. Right. It, yes. was, it was very funny, actually. I was not prepared. <laughs> plus, plus, we were a new writing group, we right? Were new. Yeah, we yeah, didn't really yeah. have established rules. We didn't understand how it worked. We just kind of were like flying by the seat of our pants. Again, we would do it differently, probably, right? Like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's hilarious. All right, that, that brings up, we got some great chat going on over here. Sage says, a lot of new editors, uh, new authors are also confused about proofreading and editing. They'll have oh. it proofread and think it's edited and often by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Very... Right. Very true. So that's, I think we've done an episode on that, but maybe we should uh, hit that up again about Why not? editing and had, what doesn't hurt. We should probably talk about that again. Um, Piper says, Pepper Dow says, my husband is a huge cheerleader for my writing, but he has never read it. I write <laughs> fantasy. He doesn't read fantasy, but he still protects my writing time and cheers me. That's that my is husband. My husband totally does not. He, he does not get what I write, but he's like, I love you, honey. You're a great writer. Go down. But the protecting your writing time is huge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It is. It's a it's very, very it's so great that not everybody's husband is supportive like that. I'm blessed and I just really appreciate that. So um let's see. Maria says, I share myself with my husband either after my first or second draft, depending on how comfortable I feel. Mm -hmm. So I think it you can be like that too. Um Shell says, I had a I had a first experience beta reading for a friend and I wasn't sure what she wanted. So I asked her before I started, it was good to get clarification beforehand. Mm. So good. If so, you're going to get beta readers, you should have a, a form that you give them that mm -hmm. lists exactly what you're looking for. Beta readers do not get a rough draft. Beta no. readers do not get, I'm just saying, I'm not saying anybody's saying that, but I'm just saying in case some new person is listening and here's beta readers during a rough draft episode, just to be clear. Beta readers don't get a rough draft. Okay, go. Barbie says, sorry. Just think about Rhonda living with me for half her life. <laughs> just watch out for her if she's ever got that hair chair out. She'll sit in it and give you purple hair, too. Boy, it's sick on Barb Day, I guess. Wow. No, no, I love you, Barb, and I we needed to hear you. that. Yeah. I needed to hear that. I was not the Einstein of writing that I thought well, I was. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Tina was mentioning that on the back of a conversation that was be ready for criticism. So don't bring a P. That's why she brought it up. She was right. not ready to hear the bad along with the good. And we were trying to say you will get uh, negative feedback. So you guys have to be ready to uh, endure that. 
Okay, and that's so why we, it's so important to have uh, be part of a writing group where there is a relationship there, where you start to build a relationship because you do love Barb, right? So yeah. now Barb could come to you, come at you heavy on, and you would take it, and it would, would understand because we know Barb, we get it, right? Yeah. So, um, Sage says, Mr. Sage is a writer too. I don't read his stuff, and he doesn't read mine except the exercises we do for a local writing group. I think that that's a oh. lot of. I think a lot of husbands and wives are, don't read each other's writing. And I think that's okay. I just, my husband, that, that that's how he shows me love is sitting there listening to Christian romance because he, he doesn't read Christian romance. <laughs> Maria I says, says, I sent a first draft to my friend when I was about 13. In hindsight, it was pretty cheesy romance. My friend told me that she and a friend of hers had read together and laughed at it. It was pretty crushing. Oh, Maria, I'm sorry. Oh, my I wrote my first book at the same age and um, I shared it with uh, the girl sitting next to me in English class and she loved it. I wrote, as I wrote the chapters, I gave it to her cause we were 13 and it was a little romance, like a little high school romance kind of a thing. And she shared it with another girl and shared it with another, it was going around all eighth grade and everyone was loving it. And then all of a sudden it disappeared and I don't know what ever happened to it, but I, wrote, that a, same I girl, wrote a soap opera when I was in eighth grade that's and awesome. I called it when the stuff hit the fan. Like, oh. was, and I used to write episodes and then take it to science class. That's hilarious. And all the kids would read it. I don't know. But, but that first cheerleader, that first friend from my eighth grade, I contacted her as soon as I was finished or when I was ready to publish uh, Searching for Anna and, and let her know like how it, that, that meant a lot to me in eighth grade. And that I still remember to this day how supportive she was. And it was a really great conversation we had. So. Right. But so don't be like Maria's friend. If someone gives right. you a rough draft of something, just realize that they they are not laughing at it. They don't think it's a joke. This is their heart and soul on paper. Be nice. And poor 13 year old Maria didn't understand those girls were just jealous. Honestly, yeah. like we know what 13 is like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a very good idea what teenagers <laughs> are like. Uh. <laughs> have, have the body snatchers come? Well, you want to know what? I do have one with purple hair now due to the lockdown. We we did purple hair for fun. Yeah. We did a horrible job, but she's happy. So <laughs> mid, mid, Middle daughter? Is yes, middle? how did you know? Yes, the middle child has to have purple hair like a peacock, but she's happy. So we're So happy. fitting for her. I'm awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So. All right, All right. So maybe we should move on now to the feeding of the backs. Unless you guys have any more on our topic, protecting your rough draft. No? All hearts clear? Okay, so we're going to move on to the feeding of the backs. What did you say? Well, we kind of were joking around because everybody gets feedback on their story during feedback time. Is your back well fed? Ha, ha, ha. All right, so today we did a writing sprint just like every week. We set a timer for 15 minutes plus probably 60 seconds or so today. My fault again. Sorry, everybody. You can have an extra minute if you want. But these are rough drafts. So we are only going to give positive feedback. That's how we treat rough drafts on the Christian Indie Writer Podcast. So Jennifer, I always pick <laughs> you to go first. Why don't you tell us what the prompt was and read us your 15-minute sprint. I would absolutely love to do that. Today's prompt was write a scene in which a character regrets having pressed send. And I would just like to say that mine's a little bit of creative nonfiction, if you all recall. <laughs> I forgot! Um, about eight months ago, but I changed it. It's a little different. Okay. But I, I actually went back to my, before I cheated while we were writing. I went, flipped over to Twitter really quick and went to my messages to read the message that I accidentally hit send on to somebody. Oh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> I remember now. Oh. And then I immediately either, I think I called Jamie. I don't think yes. I even messaged. I was like, oh, Jamie. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, this is not, this is fiction. Just inspired by that event, kind of. All right. All right. Whitney's fingers screamed across the keyboard, smoke rising from her fingertips. Never, <laughs> never in all my life, her furious flanges typed, have I encountered, encountered such a rude, unprofessional text message. How do you, who do you think you are? The god of all things sexist? No, Mr. Baker, I will not make Sure, there is coffee in the coffee pot by the time you arrive. I am not a barista. I'm not even your secretary. I am the director of social media, the best in the city. But if you keep up this caveman attitude toward me, I'll be the best social media director for some other firm. Got it, Barney Rebel? Good. Make your own stupid coffee. 
Whitney stared at the screen and took a deep breath. She could feel her, feel her pulse slowing down, the rant having the calming effect she knew it would. As therapeutic as it was to write that return message to her boss, she had no intentions of sending it, but it sure did feel good writing it. What you doing? Whitney turned and found Jamie standing over her, reading her screen. <laughs> Whit! Jamie screeched, then lowered her voice. You can't be serious. You're going to get yourself fired. I'm not sending it. I just need a event. You should just say politely, I'm sorry, but that's not my in my job description, and leave it at that. Leave it to Jamie, the voice of reason, and come up with the proper response that not only conveys the truth in a matter-of-fact way, but does it in a way that cannot be argued. You're so good at this, Jamie. Whitney highlighted the text, then hit enter to erase it. Just as she does with every email, she vents first, then rewrites. The problem was, this wasn't an email. It was a text message. A text message she had decided to use her new laptop-to-phone app to respond to. And the new app apparently did not work like email because instead of erasing her rant, it sent it. Oh. Three, two, one. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly how I'm on the phone with her. I'm like, okay, I'm not sending them. I, I know. So she's like, here, write this. So I selected it and I hit enter because if you're in Microsoft Word and you select and hit enter, it deletes it. And Twitter, in case you're wondering, in Twitter <laughs> messages, it sends. <laughs> it wasn't that bad there were no furious well the flanges may have been furiously composing it but it was it was not as bad as barney rubble can make his own coffee that was pretty harsh oh my goodness i know when i reread it i'm like this isn't that bad it was, it was pretty much like um nobody calls me baby have an no. attitude <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have another middle daughter story about that, but we'll save it. Anyway, I loved your description. I love the furious flanges and the smoke. But I mean, you totally telegraphed comedy from the beginning. So it was oh, really right. easy to be fun, have fun with that piece. Awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Robin says, always use the delete button. Where were you six months ago, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Maria said, Maria said, always write your venti things in Word, people. Yeah. <laughs> so clearly, I'm the only dumb one here. Everyone else knows how to do it right. Okay, Let's so look, I think every time you make a new friend, you need to create in your mind a get-out-of-jail-free card for that friend. And if they ever send you something that is like a volcano situation, you just have to play that get-out-of-jail-free mm -hmm. card and tell that person, there's your past. Because we all feel that way sometimes, don't we? Like... I'm going to tell off so-and-so, but then five minutes later, you love them again. So whatever. I think it's cool. All right. So that's it. Back up one second. Yeah. Way back. Sage says, sadly, my cheerleader friend passed away before I could publish mm -hmm. my first book, but we had a share. We had a shared favorite teacher at school. So I sent the first guy to pay back to that teacher. Oh, I feel you. Yeah. My, my cheerleader passed last October. So I, I completely understand Sage. There's but a that, hole there. There's a hole there, you know? Mm -hmm. That'll provide other cheerleaders, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. I just I couldn't, I couldn't let that one go. So. All right. So who's? I'm going to have Rhonda go next because she's trying to avoid <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> you know me. How do you, how, how do you avoid eye contact in a in a streaming thing? I love the power of being the host. Like I feel like you're my little puppet. I can make you dance now. Dance for me, Rhonda. <laughs> no, just kidding. Go ahead. All right. I was determined to get a full scene out and I almost did it. All right. Just push the button, will ya? What are you waiting for? I go to myself. I've been comparison shopping for weeks. Even consumer reports say this is the best time of year for this kind of purchase. I know this is absolutely the best deal I'll probably ever find on one of these, especially now that the quarantine is making them scarce. Oh, I'm parched. I'll just get a drink of Vasa first and then I'll take the plunge. As I scooch my chair back, I see the evidence that I've already made that excuse. My glass is right here, full of refreshing icy water, sunlight making tiny, beautiful prisms in the condensation. Mm. Moaning at the lack of my excuse, I raise a glass to myself, take a huge draft, and then hit send without looking back. My shoulders instantly relax, and the knot in my stomach disappears. I did it. I made the decision on my own. I made a decision, period. I deserve this machine, and I know I'll use the heck out of it. I chug the last of my water like a champion, refill the glass with tea, and then go lay on the hammock, planning to spend the rest of the day imagining how to use my new cricket. Marina, there's a huge butterfly hovering over me saying my name. 
Uh, no, it's just Crystal trying to rouse me from my sweet dreams. You won't believe what I just won. And I brought my old one for you. The oh, oh, it's finished. It's I finally decided to buy it and her friend brought her the same thing. It's finished. It's finished, Rhonda. We yeah. know. We totally okay. know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Great that's so something moment. that would happen to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's happened mm -hmm. to me a lot. And I love the butterfly. I love that she thinks the butterfly is talking mm -hmm. to her because at first <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's speculative fiction. And that is really not. I was so excited for a hot second, but I still love it. I yeah. love that ending. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Oh, love it. Yeah, it's like yeah. an irony. Well, once, I'm gonna go ahead. Once again, in like 200 words, you tell a whole story. Like, yeah, you, you can fit so much in 200 words. The rest of us can't. That's oh. just awesome. What I think was really telling was how the distraction, like you're trying to distract yourself, but then you see you've already done that, and then you get distracted by the glass and the dripples on it and all yeah. of that. So, like, I really can relate to that character. I know that you know that I can. Yeah, and a cricket. <clears throat> I mean, hey. How could you say no to a cricket? I know. Yeah, Robin's I know. like, just no, buy I it. Have one. Yes. I, I have I a feeling you. we should explain what a cricket is. It's not a bug. <laughs> it's a cutting machine. It cuts paper used for crafting. And That's vinyl great. and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. For on your walls. Yeah. All kinds of crafting. You know how I know what it is? I know what it is because of the infomercials that we used to be forced to watch. Oh. There was nothing good on TV after school or whatever. And the lady would be doing the cricket stuff. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. I'll never do it. <laughs> It's for people who would do that stuff. I I loved it, but I just am not. Okay, very good. So I will go next to keep it being too much me talky talky in a row. And again, sorry, I took an extra minute. I felt bad hearing Rhonda say because I was completing my scene. Durr. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Rebecca sat back inside. It had been a long week. The delivery of her baby sister and final streaming right in on the heels of that. She grimaced at the screen and the mediocre title of her mediocre paper. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and Analysis, Beethoven's Fifth. The most obvious score, likely the topic of every paper sent to the prof's inbox that afternoon. She wished she could have had more time, more time to be thoughtful about her choice, more time to languish in those beautiful chords and discover something in them. But the pressing deadlines of her other classes had left her with no choice but to choose a score she knew well enough to dissect adequately. To be sure, her treatment of the piece would impress the professor. Surely he would be refreshed by her take, not having to read <clears throat> for once how this song made a big impression on me when I heard it for the first time on the little Einstein show. But the paper did not impress her in the least. It's done, she said, the words like an incantation and shut the computer down. It was not as satisfying as slamming down her laptop lid, but she added the extra flourish of leaping dramatically from her chair and sending it crashing into the wall behind her. Soft, kitten-like sounds came from her parents' room. I woke the baby. Rebecca sucked in her breath and tiptoed down the hall. She knuckle-knocked on the door, which was open a couple inches. Mom? Dad? She pushed the door to the room open and had to slap her hand to her mouth at the sight before her. Mom was passed out on the bed and dad was in the glider with baby sister Melanie doing a series of girly style push-ups on his chest. Oh, baby, Rebecca cooed as she hastened to scoop the child up. Mm -hmm. Melanie continued to fuss, red-faced and indignant. Rebecca could not help but laugh now, but it did not matter. Nothing could wake her parents and the baby was already up. What are we going to do with you? Rebecca asked the fussing baby. A fresh diaper was the first order of business and then Rebecca placed a gentle hand on her mother's shoulder. Mom, here. Mom did not speak. She merely unfastened the top button of her nightgown and received the baby. Your paper? She mumbled. <clears throat> it's done, Rebecca said. It sucks, but it's done. Play for us? Rebecca sighed. She hadn't played all semester. She was likely very rusty. She crossed and approached her mother's harp, and the moment her fingers touched the strings, she knew she had nothing to fear. The strings danced beneath her fingers the way they had for hours and hours. Should say a practice, whatever. <clears throat> Immediately, she recognized the tune her fingers found and knew it was the piece she should have written about, Brahms Lullaby. That's it. Mm. Mm. I so want to feel a little baby doing push-ups on my chest. <laughs> you described that little baby so well. I guess They're so really bad it. at it. They're really bad at it, Rhonda, so you probably wouldn't be very impressed. <laughs> well, just the, just like the little, uh, I just want to hold the baby so bad right now. 
Aww. I know. Not me. Not me either. <laughs> mm. I do. I don't mean my Aww. own. <laughs> Somebody else's. <laughs> I have I bad. I am too old, but I have bad baby fever, and I have Aww. no idea why. Aww. Yeah. It's you need some grandkids. No, I'm not ready for grandkids. I have a granddaughter, but she lives in Texas, so a step granddaughter. Mm. But so, yeah, I love that, Jamie. As always, you can just put us in the middle of a, mm -hmm. of a situation, and we just feel like we're there. We know this person already. We know like whatever the whole thing looks like. We feel her, you know, pain. And mm -hmm. I would have liked to like. Do is this finished? Do you think? Like, are you is that the end, or do you think there would be? <clears throat> to be honest, I thought it was so boring. Nobody would like it. Oh no, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. You're so good at writing characters who everybody knows. Like everybody can feel connected to the character that you write. Oh, thanks. Somebody. I wouldn't call it boring because um, I felt, but I felt like I you were building up to something. Ah. And, and then we didn't get there yet. So because the, mm -hmm. the details are great, the writing is great, the characterization is great. But the the what the the what's the point wasn't there yet. So that's why I was going to ask you, like, you know, where do you think it's heading? Because like. I love that, like, she realized that that would have been a great thing to write about. But why? Like, yeah, well, she's got a little, there's a little baby in the house. And I get it. that. But so. I understand the question. Yes. If I would have had an hour, this would be a much different story. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I was going somewhere, but 15 minutes is only 15 minutes. It's like, uh, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But I really would have loved it much better to get more into the music because I've been listening to a lot of different kinds of music on this. Um, quarantine situation mm -hmm. because I realized there's a lot of music I missed out on in my youth because I was reading so much. So I'm listening to a lot of music from my youth that a lot of my contemporaries know and are surprised that I don't. I'm also listening to some classical music because I'm really starting to appreciate the feeling in the movements and stuff like that and not having to rely so much on lyrics like pop music. I'm normally a big lyrics person. So I'm just really trying to appreciate that stuff and that's why it's coming out in the writing, I think. You definitely are a big lyrics person because everything mm -hmm. we say, you have a lyric to sing to us about it. Yeah. Which is like awesome. Like, <laughs> and I started, I started doing it too. I know poor <laughs> Tina. I corrupted her. <laughs> Speaking it's, of Tina being corrupted, what did you write for us today? Baby? Uh, you have to be extra nice to me today because I really struggled with this one. Extra Aww. nice coming at you. I just didn't, I just wasn't inspired. So here we go. Julie whacked back across the floor in the same track she'd been pacing for the last 30 minutes. She took a ragged breath and wiped the tears off her face with both hands. Perhaps she should go outside for a walk to clear her head. She dismissed the thought the moment she thought it. She paced a few more times, sat down hard on the recliner, got up and paced again. She wanted to hit something, but there was nothing around. Honestly, it wasn't something she wanted to hit, but someone. Julie let out a groan of frustration. She wanted to scream, yell words she normally wouldn't say. It would give her such satisfaction, but the kids were finally all asleep, and if she woke them, she'd have to deal with crying and glasses of water and potty breaks on top of her current situation. So she held it in. <clears throat> she couldn't believe it. Joe was the last person on the planet she thought would betray her this way. He was so kind and gentle, the sweetest man. His soft southern drawl could melt, melt butter, though. She knew it too well. His perfect blonde hair and green eyes were bound to draw anybody's eye, and he just had this way with words. Finally, feeling she had things under control, she went back and sat down in front of her computer. There he was on her computer screen, her, his pearly white teeth smiling as he spoke and gestured animated but muted on her end. The heat rose once again in her face as her anger swelled. She opened a comment box and typed quickly. You're such a jerk. I can't believe you went live and told everybody our secret without telling me. I hate you and I hope you trip on a curb and break your two front teeth. She hit send and immediately regretted it as she saw the number of video views. 10,000. Excitement surged and she jumped from her chair. Had 10,000 people actually just watched her husband tell the whole world that they were... Three, two, no, no, Dina. no, Dina. <laughs> no. You did that no. <laughs> sorry. I did tell you the timer went off at the perfect moment. That is not the perfect moment. No, <laughs> because I had no idea what he just told me. Disagree, oh. disagree. 
<laughs> That's awesome. You don't even know. I love that. I, I had no idea what, what I was going to say. Like, I really expected him to fall down and bust his mouth. I really did. I thought she was going to be like, oh, no. You know what I mean? Like, I was an accidental voodoo person, you know? <laughs> That's oh. so awesome. Oh, right. Yeah. Sage says, how very dare you, Tina? She's, yes, everybody is now upset with Tina. All right. <laughs> as soon as I figure out what he did, I will let you know. Robin is a fan. Robin is so happy with your cliffhanger. She's yeah. like, <laughs> love it. I was sitting there going, oh my gosh, what is he, what did he say? What? And then the timer went off and I was like, oh, good. <laughs> 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 That's terrific. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so we're going to do the what's next. If I could just ask you other hosts to maybe mute if it's not your turn, because we're getting some kind of weird feedback here. So we're going to move on to the final segment of our show, which is called What's Next. Just like in the beginning of the show, when we talk about what's up with all of our hosts, we're going to take another trip around the virtual roundtable and ask our hosts what's next. Rhonda, I'll pick on you to go first again. What's going on with you this week, girl? What are you What are you planning to do? Um, well, a couple things. The first thing is um, I'm still working. My April Nano got sidetracked last week. So I'm very far behind on the word count I wanted. But I'm going to pick up where I left off today as soon as we're done here and um, just see if I can catch up. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to get my draft done still by the end of April. Um, so that's what I'll be working on. And also, my mom has put together a writer's notebook. Nice. And it's in the rough draft stage. And um, I will be working on that a little bit today, too. Oh, that's so exciting. Yes. Very Can I cool. ask you a question about Camp sure. NaNoWriMo? If somebody has to remind you that it exists, does that mean you're not participating? Because I think um, that might be what is going on with me right now. Because people ask me, am right. I participating? I'm like, oh, that's now? So I guess I'm probably not. Yeah, Tina's waving her <laughs> hand, too. Yeah. All right. So um, I, I look forward to seeing Barb's thing, too, Rhonda. Um, so awesome. That's great. What's up with you this week, uh, Tina? What's next? Um, I don't know. Another week at home. Yeah. And I really, I've really been struggling with the writing thing. I just can't, I, I don't feel anxious, but I did, I have some anxiety anyway. It's yeah. really strange. It's just kind of like a low humming in the background, but it's really, really hard to focus on being creative. Um, so I'm probably just gonna, um, I'm waiting for a review of my thing for my web development thing. And other than that, I, I helping my husband with the church stuff. It's just kind of weird. Well, I know and situation here's around here. We've had so many episodes on what to do to help the writers block and what to do if you think you're stuck. But sometimes it's just time to to rest. And I mean, if it's not flowing, it's not flowing. This might be a time for you to focus on other avenues in your life and just sit yeah. down and if you're creative you are and if you're not you're not and just have some grace for yourself these are strange times for us all you know what i mean yeah i open it i open up my stuff every day and look at it and i just nothing gets done so i hear you i hear you i mean you're in the chair with me and and i'll just take my my what's next next because i could just say amen to what you said it's like I'm being creative in way many other ways, but um, I'm not really grooving too much with the writing, but my husband and I have talked about it and we're just like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like this is survival mode for most people because everything is just so not what it normally is. Yeah. And um, we're just gonna see how things are when, at you know, whenever, like a lot of grace for me as far as being productive and we'll just see. So what's your what's next, Jennifer? I'm afraid I probably was the feedback. Is it still doing it? Because I yelled in my microphone at Tina. So it probably is where the feedback was coming from. I have no idea. It's gone. So okay. I'm glad. Yeah. All right. So um, my nano project is going really, really well. Um, if if my nano project is writing excuses for why I'm not <laughs> right, for why I'm not writing, doing really good at that. Um, but just like Jamie kind of said, this is like, crazy for everybody. And I was homeschooling my oldest daughter. Now I'm homeschooling all three of them. And um, I, I crack up every time I hear someone say, now you have all this time on your hands, let's blah, blah, blah. Like my church is awesome. And they're doing all these online things and our kids play practices have moved to online. 
but they're like a lot. Like it's like, it's so hard to schedule around it because I think a lot of the people don't have something else going on and we are like still booked, like still doing full on homeschooling and we're still trying to get this like flipped around and whatever. So anywho, my what's next is um, I'm just going to be working on the house and I got to keep moving forward. I do get up early in the morning and I work on my book. So I am working on a book, but I've not been showing up for office hours because it's in the middle of the day and I'm still trying to figure things out. So I'm going to think that next week is probably going to be probably till the end of the month when my husband goes back to work. It's probably going to be like this because that's just the reality that I live in right now. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, I see. Um, I think Maria, she says she's not been doing well, but she's feeling better. So she got behind out of being ill. Sorry about that, Maria. That's yucky. Um, Sage, go ahead, uh, Jen. No, it's okay. Uh, she says she's trying to write 65,000 by the middle of May because she has no sense of moderation. <laughs> she's podcasting yeah. like a mad thing. And, uh, and I think I'm a YouTuber now, she says. <laughs> I'm so glad for you. I'm so glad for you because I love that the creative is really flowing for somebody. She must have yeah. all of uh, me and Tina's whatever that makes you be able to be productive. Right. Shell says, Camp Nano and Snow White story progressing well. So more of that. I'm with Tina. I feel like I'm in survival mode with that low hum anxiety. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Everybody needs to have a little bit of grace for themselves and for other people, you know, because we are all creatures under stress right now, even though some of us are really good at hiding it. Awesome. Okay. So anything else to report, ladies, or should we sign off for this week? All right. So that concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next week. May your pen be prolific. May your deadlines be met. And may all of your words honor Christ. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.